Before we proceed on our discussion, let me present to you our objectives. At the end of this video, you should be able to generate and describe patterns, differentiate between a finite and an infinite sequence, find the next few terms of a sequence, solve for the first few terms of a sequence using explicit formula, and find the general or n term of a sequence. Let's get started. Try to look at each image. You can easily notice that each picture contains a pattern. Pattern can be seen anywhere. By definition, a pattern is a series or a sequence that repeats. Example of a pattern is a tree rings. The tree ring contains a series of concentric circles, which form a pattern. One of the most common places to find patterns is in math. Those are what we call math patterns. Math patterns are sequences that repeat according to a rule or a rules. Rule or rules is a way to calculate or solve problems. One of the best examples of math patterns is the number pattern. The number pattern are sequences of numbers that are ordered based upon a rule. When you were on elementary, you were immediately asked to recite the first 10 counting numbers. And those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That is an example of a number pattern. The rule is simply add 1. Another example of a number pattern is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Or the first 6 even numbers. The rule is simply add 2. Those are what we call sequence or simply number pattern. The first number is our first term or a sub 1. The second number which is 4 will be our second term and that is our a sub 2. The third number is our a sub 3. The sixth number is our sixth term and it is denoted by a sub 6. Let's look at this sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. The rule is add 3 since we add 3 from each term to get the next term. 3 plus 3 gives you 6. 6 plus 3 gives you 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. Another word that we have to know is the general term. The general term is simply the nth term and this is one of the many ways of defining sequence. And that is denoted by a sub n. If we are looking or solving for the 8th term, that is our a sub 8. If you are solving for the 27th term, the nth term will be a sub 27. It's time for us to learn more about sequence. There are two types of sequence, the finite sequence and the infinite sequence. When we talk about finite sequence, it means that the terms is limited, while infinite sequence, the terms keeps on going and going, meaning we don't have any last term. Finite sequence, these are the sequences that end or contain last term, while infinite sequence, these are the sequences that have no end. Let's have an example. For the finite sequence, the first 20 counting numbers contains 20 terms, which means 
that that is an example of a finite sequence. The first 10 multiples of 3 contains 10 terms. And another example of a finite sequence is 6, 11, 16, 21, 26, 31, 36, and 41. This is an example of a finite sequence since the number of terms is 8. On the contrary, when we talk about infinite sequence, some of the examples are the positive even numbers, the Fibonacci sequence, and the numbers contains of 6, 11, 16, 21, 26, 31, and so on. The number of terms is infinitely many. That means that those are examples of an infinite sequence. This time, I'm going to show you how to find the next few terms of a sequence. Given, for example, we have 12, 16, 20, 24, and we are tasked to find the next three terms in this sequence. The first step is to identify the rule in the sequence. What happened to 12 while it became 16? Yes, you are right. You add 4. What happened to 16 while it became 20? You also add 4. 20, it became 24 because you add 4. Therefore, we can say that the rule is simply add 4. The second step is for us to apply the rule in each term to solve for the next term. 24 plus 4 gives you 28. 28 plus 4 gives you 32. 32 plus 4 is 36. Thus, we can say that the next three terms are 28, 32, and 36. Let's have another example. And this time, we are tasked to find the next two terms of the sequence, 3, 9, 27. The first step is for us to identify the rule in the sequence. What happened to 3 Why it became 9? You add 6. What happened to 9 Why it became 27? You add 18. Since plus 6 and plus 18 are not the same, therefore, that is not the rule. Remember that we have four basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If addition is not the rule, we can try multiplication, since the sequence is increasing. What happened to 3 while it became 9? What is the number that you multiplied to 3 to come up with 9? You're right, that is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. Now, what happened to 9 while it became 27? Using multiplication, you multiply it by 3 since 9 times 3 gives you 27. We can now apply the second step, and that is applying the rule in each term to solve for the next term. 27 times 3 gives you 81, and 81 times 3 gives you 243. Therefore, we can conclude that the next two terms in the sequence are 81 and 243. Another way on how we solve each term in the sequence is using explicit formula. Explicit formula designates the n term of the sequence. It is an expression of n, where n is the term's location. Here are examples of explicit formula. a sub n is equal to n plus 6. a sub n is equal to 3n minus 2 and a sub n is equal to 2 raised to n. Let's have an example. 
Suppose that we have a sub n is equal to n plus 6, which is our explicit formula, we can now solve for the first four terms in the sequence. Those are a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. Let's try to solve for the first term. Writing the formula, a sub n is equal to n plus 6. Let n is equal to 1. By substitution, we have a sub 1 is equal to 1 plus 6. Then, we can now solve. 1 plus 6 is 7. Therefore, we can say that the first term is 7. Let's now look or solve for the second term. Writing the formula, let n is equal to 2 since we are going to solve for the second term. By substitution, we have a sub 2 is equal to 2 plus 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. Therefore, the second term is 8. We can now proceed by getting the third term. Writing the formula, let n is equal to 3. By substitution, we have a sub 3 is equal to 3 plus 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. Therefore, we can say that 9 is the third sequence. The third term in the sequence. We can now proceed by solving for the fourth term. Writing the formula, let n is equal to 4. By substitution, we have a sub 4 is equal to 4 plus 6. 4 plus 6 is 10. Therefore, we can say that the fourth term is 10. The first term is 7, second term is 8, third term is 9, and fourth term is 10. Therefore, the, the first four terms given the explicit formula a sub n is equal to n plus 6 are 7, 8, 9, and 10. We can solve any term in the sequence using explicit formula. Let's try to find the nth term of the sequence. Given for example, we have a sub n is equal to 3n minus 6, which is our explicit formula. We are tasked to find the 30th term in the sequence. The first step is find the value of n. Since we're looking for the 30th term, therefore our n is 30. Then, we can now substitute the value of n in the formula. a sub n will become a sub 30 and 3n will become 3 times 30. We can now solve the following operations using PEMDAS rule. 3 times 30 is 90 minus 6. 90 minus 6 is 84. Therefore, we can say that the 30th term of the sequence is 84. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something today. Please consider like and share this video to your classmates and friends. This is Sir Josh, signing off.